we're Lime TV, and this is our resident offspring. Today, he's going to assist us in showing you the best ways to protect yourself from ticks. Today, we're discussing the best ways to not get your butt bit by a tick. So how do you not have your entire life suddenly and unexpectedly ripped away by a little tiny bug bite? By preventing bug bites, duh. There are many misconceptions about ticks and tick protection. In this segment, we will discuss the truly effective ways to protect you, your kids, and your pets from dangerous infectious agents. Infectious agents? Is that like rogue MI6 spies with the flu? <laughs> no. Infectious agents, they're infectious diseases, and in this case, spread by bug bites. This is basic but very important information that most people don't practice daily. Did you know that mosquitoes are the deadliest animal on the planet? Isn't that mind blowing? They kill twice as many humans as humans kill humans. Guarding from mosquitoes and ticks take some serious daily prevention methods. Shall we get started on these methods? Yes, let's, why not? Let's dive in by discussing the best ways to protect you and your family from dangerous tick bites. Just like avoiding a lion habitat is important if you don't wanna get bitten by a lion, avoiding tick habitats seems to be the most obvious of the tick prevention methods. But that's not always possible, especially if you love being outdoors. Keep in mind, you don't need to be in the woods to get a tick bite. Ticks are in urban areas, even in your own backyard. The most common tick habitats are obviously wooded areas, bushes and shrubs, gardens, and where gardens meet lawns. Beach grass, tall grass, meadows and streams where it's moist, wood piles, stone walls, playgrounds, parks, school campuses, and neighborhoods. That's a lot of places. All of these places pose a significant risk for tick bites. So prevention methods are important to make part of your daily routine. Protective clothing includes long sleeves and long pants so a tick doesn't attach right away to your skin. Tucking your pants into your socks, socks over pants, so ticks cannot get under your pants and onto your leg. In order to demonstrate our next step, let's bring out our resident tick. Can someone call the tick please? <sighs> He's in his trailer drinking cappuccinos again. Wearing light colored clothing so you can easily see a tick on your clothes is also very important. Wearing dark colored clothing makes it really hard to see a tick. It is a myth that light colored clothing repels ticks. Ticks don't care what color your clothes are. They're not fashionistas. Well, that one seems to be. I kind of like that outfit. That's one well-dressed tick. All right, enough of that. Also, you can wear clothing treated with permethrin. Permethrin is safe for skin contact once it has dried into clothing. Many places sell commercially pre-treated clothing, even gaiters that can be worn over your pants. But you can also do it at home yourself. The best thing to do if you don't want to treat all your clothing is to designate a few outfits for outdoor activity. Spray your shoes, socks, pants, and shirts. And always wear those when venturing into any tick habitats, including your neighborhood parks and playgrounds. Bug repellent is needed to repel bugs. I mean, it's even in the name. But not all repellents are designed to repel ticks. In order to repel ticks, you need to have specific repellents at certain concentrations, which are optimized for tick effectiveness. Look for our upcoming segment, which goes into detail about which repellents are best and which ones just don't work. In the meantime, Look for repellents that are labeled for tick effectiveness. Most family-friendly repellents are only effective against mosquitoes. Doing daily and thorough tick checks helps reduce the time a tick is attached and possibly transmitting disease. So important. Consider this, not doing daily tick checks risks you paying tens of thousands of dollars in medical costs and lost wages because you got severely sick by a tick bite. You can even lose your life. A tick bite can kill you. Do not be complacent. Ticks and tick-borne diseases are in all 50 states. And Lyme disease is in over 80 countries worldwide. There are about 20 very dangerous tick-borne diseases in the United States alone. And even more tick-borne diseases are found globally. When I get off of my seat, then mommy and me are gonna show you guys how to do a tick set. Ticks like to hide. So checking scalp, neck, armpits, 
back and torso, between fingers and toes, groin and buttock area, and behind knees is crucial for a thorough search. <laughs> if you do find a tick attached, always save it for testing. Never flush or throw the tick away. Saving the tick for testing is so important because you want to know what diseases that tick is infected with. Your doctor may or may not think about testing for all of the diseases that you have been exposed to. You can find information about tick testing labs on our website. Also, the tests are notoriously poor, so you may have a false negative even if you're tested for the correct diseases. It's okay to store the tick alive in the refrigerator for up to 10 days. You can put the tick in a small bag that can seal shut on top or in a medicine bottle. If it's dead, you can store it in the freezer. Always record the date and the location on your body of the bite. Never remove a tick by fire, cigars, oil, Vaseline, or any other method other than fine tip tweezers at the head of the tick. Agitating the tick will only make it regurgitate its gut bacteria into your body. We have full instructions on our website about how to properly remove a tick. Another tick tip is to always take and keep photos of any rash because your rash may go away before your doctor appointment. That's good information. Also, pets can bring ticks into your home and onto your bed and furniture. Don't think that they're not, even if you try to keep them off the furniture. Pets will be pets. Performing daily tick checks on you, your kids, and your pets is crucial to avoid being infected with dangerous tick-borne infectious diseases. Ticks can spread disease much quicker than 24 to 36 hours. That information is cited from one study of transmission times in primates and not humans. Keep in mind that if a tick has the bacteria already in its saliva rather than its gut, then it can be just a matter of minutes. Other tick diseases can spread in minutes. For the most part, this is a largely understudied area. The best thing to do is to ensure that you find and properly remove a tick as quickly as possible. If you get an EM rash from a tick bite in a tick endemic area, the CDC states the rash alone is a Lyme diagnosis and no further testing is needed. Get on antibiotics immediately. The rash comes from the bacteria spreading under the skin, not from the tick bite. Only 50% of Lyme positive patients have reported getting or seeing a rash. So you can be infected and not have a rash. But having a rash is a definitive diagnosis. If you have a yard or any type of property, having easily made or commercially prepared tick tubes is one of the best and necessary ways to reduce ticks. Tick tubes are cardboard tubes that have permethrin-soaked cotton inside. Mice and other rodents, the original host of Lyme disease, take the cotton from the tubes to help build their nest. The permethrin then kills all the ticks on the rodents without harming the rodents. One little mouse can carry up to 100 nymph ticks on it. That's a lot of bleeping ticks. Having tick tubes does not negate you having to do the other prevention methods. However, for your own property, it greatly reduces the tick population. Check out our how-to tick tube video for a step-by-step -step guide on protecting your property. That seems to about cover it for today. Are we done? Yep, and if you have any questions, type them below and we'll do our best to answer them. Also, don't forget to subscribe and follow us on social media so you can keep up to date on protecting you, your family, and your pets from dangerous tick-borne diseases.